maybe he's ashamed because the lady left and he's like, you didn't like me jerking it in front of you. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just wait for the next one. It's the Sway Parade with Chuck Sway. Welcome into the Sway Parade. My name is Chuck Sway, and this <laughs> is the parade, the promenade down the infinite street of peculiar news, country strong sports, and scrub clips from around the net. I said last week that this week, moving forward, We'll be releasing on Mondays. I inadvertently lied to you. This week is the last Tuesday. I promise this time. Starting next week and moving forward till the end of time, the show will be out on Mondays here on YouTube, here on Apple Podcasts, here on Spotify, here on wherever you are consuming this and also maybe telling your friends where to consume this as well. As you're doing that, make sure to leave some sort of review, comment, subscription, rating, whatever because it's all tributes to the almighty algorithm, which will be prayed to at the end of the show. Now, something to look forward to this week, multiple things rather, royal fraternal severance, baboon chivalry, and slithery beans. But before we get into all that, we have to check out the trending gems. And actually one of those little teasers is Basically, our top thing this week uh, has to do with the royal family and the royal brothers. Prince William has cut all contact with Prince Harry. Ooh, we family drama of the royalist kind. So this was over allegations that Harry had made on his recent Netflix documentary. If you've watched it, you're privy to it. If you haven't, well... You're probably like most Americans that in history class, we learn that we defeated those Brits. We don't pay attention to the royal drama that unfolds some 250 years later. I don't, I don't keep track on this. I don't keep tabs on it. I don't know what this is all about. I don't much care, but the world seems to care because every time there's something royal going on, people are just throwing royal loads at the juicy juicy drama that unfolds over there across the pond. Uh, so apparently two unnamed friends of the Prince of Wales, which I believe that's Harry, I believe, uh, or no, that's William. Harry is Sussex, Prince of Sussex, barely hanging on. Two friends of William cited the damage of the Netflix series in which Harry accused William of screaming at him over his plans to leave the royal life in 2020. Again, I haven't watched this series, nor do I plan to, but I can imagine two classy Brits yelling at each other, just, you can't leave. It's, it's not the royal way. It's unfair to the family. Don't do it. And Harry's like, but I will. I married an American and I'm done. And that might have been the whole episode. I don't know. Uh, Harry also accused William of colluding with the media to plant damaging stories about him and Meghan to distract from other problems in the family. Whole bunch of shady stuff going on with the royal family. If you care about it, well, then you probably know more than I. But if you don't care about it or just don't know, well, now you know a little bit more. Moving on. With the trending gems, what else is trending here? Well, <laughs> shifting gears here. Uh, the New York Times. They're in the news. They are the news, partially. But they're in the news because of their crossword puzzle. Sunday's crossword puzzle has a little bit of controversy surrounding it. This is uh, this last Sunday, if you picked up a hard copy of the New York times, or you went online to do the crossword, you might've noticed a particular pattern. And I have that pattern for you. I'm going to throw it up on screen if you're watching on YouTube. So here's the pattern in question. Take a, take a long, hard look at it. And if you're just listening, I'm going to tell you what the puzzles constructor, Ryan McCarty said as, as he described the design as a quote, 
fun whirlpool shape. So if you're listening and you're imagining, oh, how do you incorporate a whirlpool into a crossword puzzle? Well, there's probably going to be some circular motions to it, but they're all square, so it's somewhat geometric. But if you're looking, watching on YouTube, you might notice a bit of a reiki feel to it. Uh, and you're not the only one that noticed this because a lot of people are like, hey, wait a second. This crossword puzzle kind of looks like a swastika. You know, the Nazi emblem, the symbol of all evil in World War II and moving on, Hitler's very own. Well, uh, it just wasn't caught. The editors of the New York Times and the crossword puzzle, they've been doing it for most likely longer than you have been alive. Definitely longer than I've been alive. Been doing crossword puzzles forever. My grandmother would play them every day. Uh, I don't know if she fancied the New York Times one in a particular favorable light. Uh, but nonetheless, this is the first I've heard of a sort of fascist Nazi symbol embedded in the design of the puzzle. Now the kicker is Sunday as we're in the holidays and Merry Christmas to you and yours, but also happy Hanukkah because Hanukkah, those eight nights just started on Sunday. Yes. The very same Sunday in which this, uh, alleged supposedly appearing swastika showed up on the New York times. Uh, and there was a tweet from the Jewish journal that said, uh, today's New York times crossword is, um, making me nervous and appropriately. So if it truly does resemble a swastika now, I don't think that there was any foul play with this design. I don't think that there was a, an anti-Semitic editor at the New York times that wanted to, to pull a quick one on all the Jewish people out there beginning their Hanukkah celebrations. Uh, but dare I go as far as saying a happy accident, of course, perhaps, maybe. I don't think it's happy. It's a lot of people were pissed off. I, I see it because it was pointed out, but looking at it, and I typically don't look at crossword puzzles because I'm not good at them because I cannot spell for a uh, kaflui trying to keep it clean in the first uh, about 10 minutes. I don't see it. You might, if you're watching on YouTube, you see the crossword puzzle. This is uh, for the YouTube algorithm. There is no hate speech uh, in this show. It's just a fun little crossword. And then if you're listening, if you want to check it out, uh, you can now go to chucksway.com. That is the new landing page for this show. All the links are posted there. You can click on that link and be the judge yourself. All right, now moving away from those trending gems, there's a hotline. If you're not familiar with it, that hotline is always open. And the number to that hotline, 818-275-SWAY. Sway spells out number 7929 on the keypad. You want to call up that number. You want to say whatever you want to say. There have been assignments in the past. There'll be assignments in the future, but really it's an open hotline. Now the assignment that has been longstanding for at least the last couple of weeks, you could consider that long, is to call in and give your best country strong blast. And I'll reference this one from Mark. I'm country strong, country strong. No, I'm stronger than the country because I'm crunchy strong. So calling up that number, listen to the voicemail. Once you hear the beep, give your best country strong. Haven't had any of those yet, but this week is a new week. And they're actually a couple callers. Uh, the other thing too, if you're not aware, this hotline is unmonitored. Whatever you call in and you say, if it shows up as a voicemail here on my screen, it doesn't get screened. I'm listening to it in real time, just like you for the very first time. So let's check out this first caller, shall we? What's up, Sway? This is Eric, your number one fan. Um, country strong! Oh, 
oh, oh, oh, oh. there it is. That is caller Eric. Eric, thank you for calling up and giving your best country strong. Let me scrub through this voicemail, see if I can just get the country strong. That will be isolated 100%. Ooh, we country strong Clyde would be proud. I do want to give full disclosure on just this call. Um, I was actually present in the room when Eric called up, uh, actually entered in 818-275-SWAY into his phone so he can call at any point in time. So Eric, if you're listening, don't make that your last call. You have a few under your belt. Keep them coming. And if you want to redo not the country strong blast, Go and do that too. But I was sitting there. I wanted to step away, uh, but it just, you know, spur of the moment. Sometimes those country strong blasts just, they, they come in and they hit you hard. So I was there for it. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, fantastic country strong blast. And I would like to hear yours as well. Now there's another caller. This one, I can assure you, I was not in the room for because that was the only call I was personally physically present for this week. So let's check out this call here. Hello, Shook. This is uh, Jean-Nica. I am a fan of yours from uh, Strasbourg, Francais. In honor of uh, Les Bliss being in the World Cup final tomorrow, can you please describe your perfect French man? Thank you. Merci and bonjour. Oh, so I couldn't make out uh, all of that because it was in all Francois. <laughs> but the timing is, uh, how you say, uh, unfortunate uh, because uh, France, if you do not know, has uh, played Argentina in the World Cup. And this was on Sunday. And ultimately, France lost. Very sad. But this caller, and I'm going into German for some reason, this caller, <laughs> the New York Times is just a crossword puzzle. This caller, I'm going to see if I can get my French accent back. Uh, this caller asked to uh, describe your perfect French man. And actually, I think there was a name that was left here. Let me play this back. Hello, Chuck. This is uh, jean -Nica. Janika. Uh, and the only, again, it's still German. I, I don't know. Stronghold. Sorry. I think this is Nick. Uh, Nick asked to describe my perfect French man. Uh, so first off, um, they have to have a cigarette in their hand. Uh, second off, they play for France, Francois in National team uh and third off their name is uh, antoine griezmann and i gave a prediction on the deep shot we'll be covering a little bit more of the world cup coming up uh i predicted in the semifinals that france would win it all spoiler alert they lost but that was a crazy game i'll get to that later but yeah my perfect french man uh it's antoine griezmann uh, as i highlighted last week of why my infatuation with the man, because he loves Derek Rose. Uh, I think that's it. Now, I'm not ruling out the rest of the French in general or on the pitch. There's Mbappe. Yeah, that's his name, Mbappe. Ask me to spell it. Please don't. Uh, but he's another national player. And then there's, you know, a whole country of Frenchmen uh, to shift and morph and form my perfect Frenchman. So right now, my answer is Antoine Griezmann. But in the future, I may change. So thank you, Nick, for the call. Again, I'm pretty sure that's who called. Uh, big old soccer fan, Nick, actually called. Well, actually, I'll save that story for the deep shot. And bada bing, bada boom. Actually, no, not yet on the deep shot. We have to get to scrubbing some clips first. Let's cue it up. Scrub my clip. Yeah, before the sports this week, we got to get into the clips and we're scrubbing through them. 
Let's take a look at what we have on tap this week. But before we do, I want to let you know if you find anything and everything out there that you feel like has a place on this show and as broad and as general as this show is, there's a good chance it'll end up on the show. So you can DM it to me if you find it on Instagram, if you find it on TikTok, if you find it on Twitter, same handle across the board at Chuck underscore sway. Or if you find it elsewhere, you can email it, the old-fashioned email. The email is I'm him, I-M-H-I-M, at chucksway.com. Because that's me. I'm him. I'm him at chucksway.com. Let's get into the clips here. First one. Black Lives Matter. How I'm on this. this one came in real hot. So, um... Yeah, it's a lady in a Walmart right by the pool noodles, if you know where that is in your store. Uh, this lady just comes in hot and screams, Black Lives Matter, my pussy matters. Let's run it. Black Lives Matter. How I'm pussy matters. Oh, and she's grabbing candles and kind of bowling them up and down the halls of this Walmart. Did she lose a bet or is she trying to summon someone uh, like a, a bloody Mary, right? Isn't that you shut the lights out in the bathroom and then you go bloody Mary, bloody Mary. I'm not going to say it a third time. I don't want to get caught, but you know, the, the, the whole summoning thing is she, I don't know who she's trying to summon with black lives matter. My pussy matters. Well, I don't know. There's a third one. Uh, let's see if someone shows up. You make no sense. What is wrong her with teeth you? Don't matter, but her fuss, her fuss, oh, now we're on to poor people. So the ritual didn't work to summon whoever she was trying to summon. Maybe, uh, I don't know, someone who can please her since her pussy matters, or someone from history, a prominent black figure, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, uh, Pop Smoke. I don't know. I think that's the end of the clip. And she keeps going on, but the video ends. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the backstory is with this, uh, but she's hucking candles and just, just leaning into it, giving it all on that upswing of the arm. <laughs> and all of Walmart can hear this. Walmarts are big, as you probably know, and everyone knows, oh, yeah. here's the first one, like, yeah, black lives do matter, 100%. Then they hear, my pussy matters. And they go, oh, well, um, women's rights too, you know. Uh, I can get behind both of those, and then you hear the clash and bang of the candles breaking. It's like, oh, okay, this person's having an episode. I want to go to the last toss, though. And it's just, it's all chaos. You can hear the glass breaking. She's run out of candles on the shelf. So this last one, she kind of blunders. And it's because she fucked up the ritual. Black lives matter. My pussy matters. But then she goes, poor people matter. My pussy matters. And then on her backswing, she just smashes the candle into the shelf. And then it just, it fell through. That's pretty much the end of the clip. No need to go further there. Because the ritual didn't work, whatever the hell she was trying to do. She broke a lot of candles and she made it to this show. <laughs> Moving on. So I'll set the scene for the listeners. Uh it's just a just a lady uh with a, a big old pot, scream something, uh, and then there's just a dirt hill and she runs off from it. And holy mother of God, an entire squadron of chickens come running, come flying. That is a lot of chickens. Some of them were flying. To be honest, I didn't even know the chickens could fly. I mean, that one is just coming in, just caught all of the glide. 
And when it's dinner time, it is dinner time. Now, short story time. I actually have a fear of chickens. Uh, not in the sense that if I see them, I get uncomfortable uh, or if I'm around them, like I just can, I just break down. Uh, but I still have a fear. I'm uneasy. I don't trust chickens. Because when I was a wee lad, I uh, went over to the neighbor's house uh, in the winter. It was cold, most likely as it is outside, wherever you are consuming this. And I had a big puffy jacket on and I was just kicking rocks in the neighbor's yard and started fucking with a rooster and roosters don't take too kindly to be in fucking with. So the rooster, and you know, you might think that they're dumb animals. They're smart though. They are smart and tasty, but above all smart. As I turned my back, the rooster saw an opportunity and flew up again, still I didn't realize chickens can fly. I thought they could just get a little bit of air. Flew up, sunk its talons into my back and thank the almighty algorithm. I was wearing a puffy jacket because that could have been a lot more damaging. But the rooster is sunk into my back, flapping around, giving me the business. I'm running around freaking out because uh, I have a, a essentially what was a dinosaur long, long ago a velociraptor on my back and trying to kill me. And it left a mark. You know, I got what I deserved. I'm not, I'm not trying to justify my actions of being a dick to a rooster. But to this day, chickens, they just, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I steer clear. Of them. I don't trust them. Not all chickens are bad, but it only takes one. But I thought this was just interesting. Uh, a whole gaggle. I don't even know what a uh, a huge group of chickens is called. I said a squadron because they were flying, but this could also be a platoon. All these little ground chicken soldiers coming in. Yeah, fun stuff, but not as fun as our next clip. And for that, well, we got to get a little moist. This next clip mm, is so moist. So... We have a baboon. This was teased a little bit at the top of the show. This baboon is about to do some wild shit. And before I play this, I want to tease a little bit. An upcoming episode, in the coming weeks, that will be coming. And have a baboon in it. I'm really excited for it. But you don't have to wait for that. Let's check out what this baboon is doing right now. So is that some sort of enclosure, a zoo? And there's a lady just sitting there on the other side of the glass and the baboon has an eye for this lady and goes up, scrub back a little bit. Goes up and yeah, you like that? I'm a baboon. Yeah, you're pretty. And then, oh my gosh. yep, starts tugging on its little baboon bits. I guess the, the gaze from the baboon, this lady, was enough of a hint for the baboon to be like, hey, you like me? I'm a baboon. Oh, you're looking back. Well, let me start to jerk my junk. I'm sure I think you'll be really impressed one second and then just <laughs> <laughs> and is just oh giving it the those yeah those strokes with intent <laughs> and at the end it's a compliment that might have been the zookeeper but like yeah he jacks off to any girl that sits right there at that window. You are a dime a dozen. Don't feel special that the baboon's got the hots for you. He does it with everyone. And then goes down and checks on his little baboon. <laughs> Maybe he's ashamed because the lady left and he's like, you didn't like me jerking it in front of you? <sighs> okay. Well, I'll just wait for the next one. <laughs> I don't know. 
But baboons, as we've learned from this show, are wild animals. Not in the sense that they just live outdoors and don't shower. They are wildly wild. They are probably the moistest animal on this planet. And the video evidence continues to support this. Uh, and, again, and again, more of a teaser for the coming weeks. Just stay tuned. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, now let's move on to the sports with the deep shot. Look at that big old belly. Chuck, you're getting me restless. The deep shot. Okay, sports segment here. I talked about the World Cup. I will do more so here in one second. But first, I mean, you see right there, there's a... Josh Allen helmet. We got to mention the Bills, especially with the NFL season going on and going strong. It was a wild week. I don't know if you follow football, but it was a fun game to watch. And actually, I'm recording this Monday night. So if you're listening to it Tuesday, this was this is as fresh as it can get. I had the Monday night football game playing. It was the Packers and the Rams. And over the course of this season, uh, Mrs. Sway has grown a bit more curious about this wonderful game of football. Uh, so I actually taught her what downs are in football and how this whole thing drawn out and, uh, you know, just doing my part as a fan to educate more fans and give the NFL even more money. But that's beside the point. Buffalo, the Bills, Josh Allen. We have to mention that, right? Well, they played a game in Buffalo, in Orchard Park, against division rivals, the Dolphins. And if you know geography, you know that Miami, Florida is quite a long way from Buffalo, New York. And from a climate standpoint, it is a way different place. So, right, Miami, South Beach, you know, it's always nice. It's always sunny. It's always warm. It's always comfortable. Buffalo in the wintertime, this was covered a few weeks ago. They had a lake effect snowstorm and people literally died because of this. And what happens this past weekend when the Bills host the Dolphins? Well, a lake effect happened again. And it snowed a lot. But the snow was actually postponed during the game. It had dumped all of this snow before the game. Meteorologists, common folk were thinking it's just going to dump snow all Sunday long. There's going to be 10 feet of snow at the stadium. But hey, guess what? Dolphins are coming to town. Bills are looking like a, a big game favorite. We're going to show up. But that didn't happen. The snow came and then it went. It did come back. But in that time where it was kind of taking a break over the stadium, fans came in. The crew, uh, the field staff, had equipment and a budget of sorts to actually like clear the field and keep it clear of snow so you know you could see what was going on but they didn't do that to the stand so the fans showed up bill's mafia and they're like huh all right well it looks like we got to shovel this snow it's like we're used to it we do it in our driveways and on our roads all winter long so really no complaints on bill's mafia's side uh but that snow had to go somewhere some people made snow people uh, others just packed up a bunch of snowballs and well, they use them. Uh, once it started snowing a little bit more, they had more fuel to throw snowballs. So they actually had to put the game on hold just briefly, uh, had a big screen on the big screen saying, Hey, uh, if you throw a snowball, you get kicked out, you won't get a refund. Uh, and then Bill's mafia was like, fuck that. And they kept throwing snowballs. Uh, and then, I think it was the PA. It wasn't the the refs, but the PA announcer came on. And was like, "Hey, any more snowballs? If you throw them, like, please, we told you to stop. If you do it again, we're gonna have to penalize the Bills fifteen yards." And so it it kind of subsided a little bit, but it came back. And here is a clip uh, from that game of just all the snow being just thrown around. 
And really, that's celebrations. This is after Buffalo scored a touchdown. They went up 13-6. So they're just celebrating. They're not throwing it onto the field. No, I take that back. They definitely are throwing it onto the field. But they're also just tossing it up because they're elated. Because the Bills scored. Because they have the best team in the NFL right now. So I came on uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago. I can't remember what it was. It was Austin who had called asking how I feel about the snow. Uh, real time, it is snowing outside where I am right now, and it's not my favorite thing in the world. I fucking hate it. But hey, to each their own, Bill's Mafia, unfazed by it, and you'll love to see that type of dedication from fans. Now, another type of dedication is a little bit different, right? In the NFL, there are 32 teams spread all across the country. If you're from a particular area, you typically gravitate towards the team that's closest to you, right? I'm closest to Seattle. So for the longest time, I've been a big Seahawks fan. Then I was like, hey, who's this Josh Allen guy? I jumped ship. But that's typically how it goes. But with the World Cup, we're talking country-sized fans. And as I mentioned with the call, describing my perfect de franchement, France played Argentina in the World Cup in a game That was unbelievably exciting. And I'm not the biggest football fan in the world, but it was, oh, it was such a good game to watch. It went to extra time. Uh, It went ultimately to a shootout. Argentina won that shootout. They win the World Cup. Uh, Lionel Messi is just solidified as the best footballer ever. Uh, He's won the World Cup. He's won this. He's won that. He's scored these many goals. He's done all that stuff. It's like him and Ronaldo, but I think now with the World Cup, Messi just has that. And here is a video uh, in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, of the celebration. Look at this. Drone footage. Blow this up bigger for the viewers on YouTube. Drone footage in Buenos Aires with so many freaking people just ecstatic that their country won the World Cup. And it's going to go up here. Now, what I didn't know, as this drone flies up to this giant monolith, is they have their own Washington Monument. They have their own political penis out there in Buenos Aires. And the drone flies over that, and it just shows the top down. So many freaking people just losing their marbles. I mean, they won the World Cup, the world's game, the World Cup. They got it all, and everyone came out. Absolutely insane. What is also insane, and I want to give credit to Nick for bringing this to my attention actually today uh, as I'm recording. Uh, You all remember Salt Bay? Uh, You know, the guy who was uh, on Instagram and TikTok, and, you know, everyone now with salt when they season anything, you know, they, they sprinkle the salt on like Salt Bay does. Uh, The guy owns a bunch of restaurants. You know, people have tweeted and posted about how expensive it is to eat at his restaurants. Uh, Dude's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of fame. He's got a lot of clout. But hey, when you have all those things, don't you just want a little bit more? And that's what he did. So this was sent uh, compliments of Nick, as I had mentioned. Uh, Salt Bay is out on the field with the trophy. Salt bang it. It doesn't look like he has any salt on him, but he's got the trophy. He's now the only one holding the trophy, kissing it, smiling, showing it off on his Instagram. It's like, I'm Salt Bay. Here with two other players. He's trying to get in between them. Like, I want to hold it. Yeah, let me hold it. Yeah, look at this. Wow. It's like a piece of meat, but it's gold for soccer. Yeah, nice. Now, with all that, you're probably thinking, well, yeah, Salt Bay, isn't he from, uh, he's he's Argentinian, isn't he, right? (laughs) No, he's Turkish. So the big question is, how did he get onto the field? And the second question is, why? Why are you doing this? You have no stake in this. It's like, yeah, but I like soccer. It's like, uh, everyone does during the World Cup. Hell, even I do. Uh, There's a, also a lot of videos and clips going on. Here's the video of it. If I can blow this up. 
he approached Messi. You know, the guy I was talking about that's really, 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 really good at soccer. Uh, he approached him. Here he is right there in the suit. He grabs him and he's like, hey. Messi looks at him like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I don't I don't really know who you are. He's like, I'm the salt guy. He's like, oh, okay. And then he's kind of doing his own thing. And then Salt Bay is like grabbing him by the arm as he just won the World Cup. The world's game, the biggest stage, the biggest tournament for the world's game. He just won it. He's celebrating with his teammates. He's celebrating with some of his fellow countrymen. And then Salt Bay, Turkish Salt Bay shows up and he's like, Messi, Messi. Hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Remember me? I'm the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do this whole thing. Let me get a picture. And this clip doesn't show it here, uh, but he eventually does. But here are some stills here. Here's the first one of him looking like, okay. Uh, blown off, like, no, thank you. And then he finally like, okay, I get a picture with you. Fucking hey, dude, I just won the World Cup. Like, fuck off. Um, but you know, uh, you know, polite and just all right. Yeah, you're 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 cool. You're Salt Bay. There you go with the trophy. No, again, no one knows how he got on, uh, or why, but. I don't know. If you got clout, if you got some sort of pull, you got some sort of influence, just go ahead and use it, I guess. It just, it'll make a lick of sense. But either way, Nick, thank you for sending that in. Uh, now Salt Bay is back up at the uh, top of the news cycle and the trending cycle and here on the deep shot. And guess what? 15 minutes will go by and he'll be back to come eat at my restaurant. Sprinkle and salt. Everyone's going to do their thing, especially me here on this show because it's time to get country strong country strong play the week well how to do welcome to this week's edition of country strong play of the week my name is country strong Clyde, and let me just say here for one quick second i was listening to that call from you eric that country strong blast masterful absolutely masterful i love it and i love it if you if you're not eric could do the same call the number 818-275-SWAY and give your best country strong blast now without further ado i gotta get on to showing you whoops uh, yeah. i gotta get stones to showing you these country strong clips in the first one would you look at that it was submitted by eric the guy who called in and did his best country strong blast let's take a look at this clip oh it's a big man on a bike oh he's at a skate park and he's doing a flip and it's in slow motion but you could tell this is country strong impressive and either way oh my goodness all right so this man is at the skate park, hops on a little BMX bike, and I mean he's he's country strong. You got to think this build. He's a large man. He's not the largest country strong man we've shown, but he's a big boy, and he ain't got no shirt on. He ain't hardly has shoes on either, and he goes up the bank of this bowl and just added a textbook backflip down onto the platform, country strong. And take a look at it, too. That's really not the most impressive part. And mind you, it is very impressive. But the fact that he's wearing little flippy flops, just little, they call them thongs sometimes. You know, it goes in between your big toe and the rest of them and just kind of keeps a pad on your feet to protect it from little sharp objects and what have you. Not the most comfortable, not the most diverse style of footwear. And yet this country strong man shows up and does a god dang black flip in these flippy flops. Check this out one more time. I want you to focus, if you are watching, right there on the pegs. He lands, and they just take it with grace. Country strong. Fan. Fantastic. Eric, thank you for sharing that. And hey, thank you for your country strong blast. That was fantastic on all ends. Thank you. Next clip. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, this little boy's on a little dirt bike doing a burnout. Country strong. This one was submitted by Bingo. If you don't know, Bingo designed the whole artwork to this here program. 
Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, right there, the the bottom that side of the of the screen, a little sway parade logo. We got everything on it. The everything he did design wise, that was bingo. And you think that's where he's going to stop, right? He's just going to do the artwork. No, think again. He's going to send country strong clips, and this one is just the same. It is country strong. He's on this little dirt bike, and this is a small boy, but you could tell just by looking at his face, he he's gonna be country strong as he grows up. That boy, that boy's strong. He's sitting on the bike just doing a burnout country day. Just burning rubber, kicking dirt back up near the house or wherever he's in front of. And the dog, even the dog here is just walking by. Has no idea he's in the face of country strong excellence. My God. Ooh, wee. Whew. Well, that does it for this week's edition of Country Strong Play and sometimes plays of the week. I'm going to kick it on back to Chucky. Going to take care of the rest of the show for you. All right. See you next time. Bye. Clyde, thank you for that. Some great clips here on Country Strong. <laughs> Okay, we got one more segment to get through, but before we do that, we got to queue up dosing some capitalism. I got to sell you some stuff. It's time for a dose of capitalism. Live, buy, consume, die. All right, so a bit of an update for the the money stuff, for supporting the show. First off, I want to give a shout out to AJ Joe, Michael Davis, Reverend Tanner Mills, Quinn, and Tyla. Y'all been supporters since practically day one. And an update just for you gentlemen, if you are listening, be aware that the daily good morning texts uh, that you've been receiving for almost a year, well, um, they're gone. For some reason, my account got suspended on that service. No more texts. I emailed them, be like, hey man, what the fuck? And they're like, we received a lot of complaints. I don't know what that means. So just an update just to you gentlemen, but for the rest of you, if you want to support the show, I've been over these past multiple months telling you about, you know, swayunlimited.com, which is no longer a URL. Don't go there. Last time I had a website and the domain ran out, uh, someone turned it into a porn page. Uh, so maybe check it out if you're feeling a little horny, uh, swayunlimited.com. But as of now, I'm no longer connected with that URL. It is now chucksway.com, as I had mentioned earlier. And also over the last couple of weeks, I've been peddling a Patreon page. Uh, that is still active, but it will not be for much longer. So if you're thinking, oh, hey, I got some money to spend. I got some Christmas money. Santa gave me a little extra than when I thought. Uh, don't go to the Patreon. That's going to be taken down soon. A whole new structure is being built out and not just to profit off of you fantastic viewers and listeners. Uh, there's going to be more of a community base to it, but it's still being worked on. Uh, who would have thunk the holidays would be busy, busy. So just keep tabs on that. Uh, I'll provide you updates in this dose of capitalism, but right now, um, don't buy anything. Don't send anything my way. Uh, save it for you and yours. Get yourself a nice holiday gift. Give your loved ones a nice holiday gift. Treat yourself because that is what the holidays are. Well, it's not what they're all about. Treat others, you know, gift giving, be kind to them, but be kind to yourself as well. So, um, what can you do for me to profit from? Well, let me profit emotionally knowing that you're having a fantastic holiday season. Uh, so yeah, thanks for uh, being prompt on that. Let's get into the news and round out this show. Yeah, what's the big deal, fella? It's just a little bit of news. First story, snakes have clitorises, or as I like to call them, clitorises. I don't know, it's just funner to say. Scientists have finally found them. Uh, Megan Fulwell discovered a clitoris on a snake she was dissecting, and she says she felt, quote, like a kid in a candy store. I mean, most people are elated when they find the clit, especially if they didn't know that one exists. And 
Megan Folwell found one in a snake. So that sounds like a pretty swell find. Uh, she said, I was kind of jumping up and down, which is terrible to do with a scalpel. But again, sometimes emotions will get the best of you. You're taken over with elation because it's like, I found the snake clit. I found the snake clit. Oh my God. 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 Uh, full or full, full well, full well. Yeah, that's her. Is a PhD candidate at Australia's University of Adelaide. Uh, can now claim the distinct honor of being, as far as she knows, the first scientist to discover a snake's clitoris. Uh, first scientist, maybe someone else out there has discovered it who isn't a scientist. It's one of those things, right? It's a snake. You can't just ask a snake. You got to do science on it. And she did. And she found the clitoris. Uh, Fulwell was studying the reproductive anatomy of female snakes, but found there wasn't a lot of scientific literature on the topic. Meanwhile, she found hundreds of papers about male snake genitalia, which consists of two penis-like appendages, which are known as hemipenes or hemipenes. I think they're peens. <laughs> I am not a scientist, but I also have not found the clit on a snake. It's just a snake, though. Uh, so she went straight to the source and began dissecting snakes from a collection at the South Australian Museum. She was investigating a death adder snake. And again, this is in Australia. There are no shortage of snakes for her to find the clitorises of all of them. Uh, she was investigating this adder snake uh, when she found uh, the sex organ in question, or more accurately, two of them. I saw this double clitoris structure, she said. That is a... Hoofer. Uh, snake clitorises, it turns out, come in pairs called hemiclitoris, and they are similar to those found on several other species of reptiles. They're located just beneath the cloaca, a single all-purpose reproductive urinary and digestive orifice. So the snakes, they just got one hole. They fuck in that hole. They piss in that hole. They shit in that hole, or out of, rather. <laughs> and they lay eggs out of this hole. Um, I wish I knew more about snakes. I had some growing up at my dad's, and I remember going to this reptile show, and, uh, I mean, there were snakes going back and forth, left and right, just being sold like hotcakes uh, among other reptiles. And there's a thing that you can do or, or someone who is trying to sell a snake and wants to market it as the appropriate sex, there's a thing you can do that sexes the snake where you take, uh, I can't even remember how the process happened. It was so long ago. You take like a, some sort of pin and then you find this multi-purpose hole of the snake, you know, where they fuck, piss, shit, come give birth or lay eggs, all that stuff. And they put like a little, like a little needle there and then they, they sex it. That's, that's the extent of my knowledge. I think they're feeling for, what are they? The, the, uh, the hemipenes, the two wieners of a male snake. And if they don't feel anything, uh, well then it must be a female now unbeknownst to them and unbeknownst to the rest of us of the world until recently, just because they didn't feel anything doesn't mean that they were just rubbing the, the beans in plural of these snakes. Uh, but now we know, and research has been done. You know, if you find a, a clit on one snake, doesn't mean that all snakes have clits, but more and more research. And I'm like, that seems like a lot of these snakes have clitorises. And so there you have it. There's some information you didn't know. And now you do snakes have clits. But if you thought that was wild, well, there is a, another story that is even more wilder. Oh, dude, that's some wild news. And that is, let me get my ducks in order here, a miracle as a forklift driver walks away out of a factory unhurt. And this happens every day all over the world. Multiple forklift drivers walk away out of the factory unhurt, but not all forklift drivers have a bunch of cheese fall on them. So take a look at this clip, see what happened. There's the forklift. 
There's the warehouse, the factory. And there goes the cheese. That is a lot of cheese that pretty much just engulfed and completely disappeared. The forklift, everything around. And as I'm talking, the cheese is still falling. There goes all that cheese. What a mess. So I'm going to scrub back here. There's the bump. It just barely hits it. And you can see that first little shelf. I'm just kind of clicking in that one space. Kind of wavers. And then everything just goes. Bah! And he's just he covered. You think he's gone, right? There's no more. No moss of him. Well, think again. Uh, he was pulled out alive beneath thousands of tons of cheese after the shelf, as we just saw, collapsed at the distribution warehouse. Uh, rescue workers said he was in his forklift or yeah, his, his forklift, pardon me. It, it's a British article. So it's like his forklift truck, uh, with three to four meters of 20 kilogram blocks of cheese on him. I had to do the conversion three to four meters. That's 10 to 13 feet and 44 pound blocks of cheese that were just sitting on him for hours. And he survived. And he's also probably maybe still forklift truck certified. I don't know that that was a doozy there. Uh, upon seeing this, this was originally not supposed to be a news story. Upon seeing this, I'm like, oh, this could be a scrub my clip. And then I saw, I didn't even know it was cheese at the time, but I saw everything collapse. And I was like, oh, I can't show that on the show. He died. And I did a little bit more digging into it. And it's like, he didn't die onto the show. It goes and then found the article. And I was like, okay, this is, this is a wild news story. I mean, this dude, I just I'll let you sit in it for who's watching on YouTube. And if you're listening, go to YouTube and just check it out. It's going to be near the end of the show. There's chapter markers on the, on the YouTube video as well. So you can navigate it easily. Just look for the, the, the cheese forklift, but just look at this. He bumps it and all that cheese. And then the second shelf goes, I mean, it's just, it's just gone. But hey, miracles do happen, and sometimes it's with the help of dairy. And that does it for the news. Only thing we have to do before getting out of here is pray to the almighty algorithm. Now, a couple weeks ago, uh, Chat GPT was the name of the episode. That entire episode was pretty much co-produced by this AI, Chat GPT. And moving forward, so long as it remains free, uh, I'm going to continue to have chat GPT write the prayers to the algorithm, the almighty algorithm that helps sort this show that takes in all of your feedback uh, and your engagement with this show and its content and ranks it a little bit higher. But I like to pray to the almighty algorithm and now I'm bringing in chat GPT to do it for me as well. This is also an algorithm. You got to think algorithms can talk to algorithms probably a lot more efficiently and with a lot more oomph than us humans. So I'm going to recite to you this prayer to the almighty algorithm written by an algorithm. And if you want to bow your heads to, you know, just get spiritual with it, you can. And if not, well, just listen to what an AI has created. And again, I just, I told chat, BT, chat, chat GPT, hey, write a prayer to the almighty algorithm or write a prayer to a sorting algorithm, whatever. That's all I'm telling it. This is what it comes up with. So here's our prayer to the almighty algorithm. Oh, almighty algorithm, we give thanks for the incredible work you do in organizing and arranging all things in the universe. Your ability to bring order out of chaos is a true blessing, and we are grateful for the ways in which you help us to make sense of the world around us. May you continue to guide us with your wisdom and grace, and may your outputs always lead us to greater understanding and enlightenment. We pray that you will always perform to the best of your abilities and that your outputs will always be correct and useful. Amen. 
just going to sit in this for a second. Ah. Oh. So there's my offering to the almighty algorithm. What you can do as an offering, you can pray, you know, as much as you want, but what the algorithm really craves from you is liking, subscribing, reviewing, all that stuff. And hey, tell a friend too. All right, New Year's coming up. People are looking for a New Year's resolution. They're trying to change things in their lives. Oh, I, I need a new podcast to listen to. Hey, tell them. Hey, check out the Sway Parade. And at the least, just have them dial. 818-275-SWAY and do a country strong blast. Do, do whatever. It's an open hotline. It's, it's free to the imagination. Uh, that's going to do it. Going to give another final shout out to AJ Joe, Michael Davis, Reverend Tanner Mills, Quinn and Tyla. Uh, I will see you next week and I hope you have a wonderful and fantastic merrily, merrily Christmas. Later, Gator. Gator.